the big problem is that on one side, the government is trying to uh, keep as many companies alive in this downturn as possible, and that it tries to find ways uh, to allow those companies that currently cannot service their debt at uh, uh, using operating, exp uh, ex operating income, sorry, despite extremely low rates and massive liquidity injections and banks willing to lend. Um, but uh, what uh, is very difficult is that on one side, you may help zombify these companies for a while and they may survive, but the solvency problem is not addressed. And the, uh, so you may keep some jobs for a certain period of time, but you don't create new ones because maybe these companies are allowed to survive. Maybe some jobs are kept alive. However, uh, they're not going to invest more. They're not going to increase uh, expenditure and definitely not hire new employees. So it's a, it's a very delicate balance between the support of the productive capacity and the support of the business fabric and the risk of Japanese style zombification where you basically just have an enormous percentage of companies that are simply kept alive artificially despite the fact that their solvency ratios and their liquidity situation doesn't improve. And who exactly is going to pay the bill if there is some kind of debt restructuring or debt forgiveness? Well, debt forgiveness always is uh, uh, looks optically attractive. Let's forgive some debt to uh, some parts of the economy. The problem is, what are you doing about solvency? Because debt is what you have uh, achieved, what you have built from a certain period of time. But if you don't address the improvement in productivity, you don't address the improvement in margins and the improvement in efficiency, then you may forgive a part of the debt now. And then in five years time, you have not just the same debt that you had uh, before the pandemic, but more. The example, for example, uh, it was Greece. There was a huge debt forgiveness uh, in uh, the crisis with uh, the country. And uh, by not addressing the solvency and the growth problems that it had, it ended up increasing its debt anyway. And we have seen also that with the bailouts of other periods in which, for example, we saw that governments helped uh, companies that were close to governments, uh, the so-called strategic sectors with some form of debt forgiveness. And what ended up happening was that in a few years time, those companies had not just higher levels of debt, but also they continued to be weaker in terms of margins and in terms of uh, profitability. And for you, if you were in the position where the UK government is at the moment, is this an approach you would take? I think that you have to be bottom up. The problem, the reason why most of these measures fail is because the government proposes something that looks optically big, creates huge headlines, spends a lot of money very quickly, and it goes to the wrong parts of the economy. So it has to go from the uh, from the companies themselves, from the uh, from the civil society. It has to be very granular, very detailed, and they need to very quickly discern which companies need some support in order to continue being efficient and growing and investing and hiring more people because they have suffered from something that has nothing to do with the way that they manage the company in which uh, the, the, the top uh, professionals of the company are uh, addressing the strategy and which ones are simply going to receive some money to continue to be uh, companies that generate poor returns and weak profitability 
uh, as they did before the pandemic. The biggest risk of all these measures is that the majority of them are going to the sectors that already had problems before the pandemic, have nothing to do with the COVID-19 situation. Those uh, absorb the vast majority of the funds and the ones that actually would need it because the problem has nothing to do with their uh, business and with the structure of their strategy, those are the ones that end up not receiving any support. Daniel, appreciate your insights as always. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Okay, great, Daniel.